Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's message. When Peter finally answered the question as to who Jesus really is, speaking on behalf of the rest of the disciples, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus captured that and said, This is rock solid truth. Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But that was not just some uh, 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 spurious statement Jesus made. He was be being very deliberate, very scientific about what he was saying. He said, I'm building myself an ecclesia. I'm building myself a people, an entity that will carry the same type of power, same measure, intensity, expansiveness of power like the Romans invested in their gate or their senate. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus said, when I build my church, the gates of hell or the gates of uh, and pockets of authority, decision makers that make decisions on behalf of hell will not be able to prevail against the decision makers from the church. Well, I have news for you. We are in the month of March and at the very end of March, Easter weekend, we are going to be having storming the gates. 20 hours, 20 hours of worship and deliverance. All the gates of hell, or the decision makers of hell, the decision making apparatus of hell, all those who work on behalf of hell, be they demons or human agents driven by demons, are going to feel the might and the power of the Church of Jesus Christ. Yes, storming the gates. And for this entire month, we're going to give you some excerpts of what we did some time ago under the caption, storming the gates. We began with the midnight gate, storming the midnight gate. And that's where we are starting at the end of March on Holy Thursday night from 10 p.m. right down across, around, until 6.30 p.m. Good Friday. You can't afford to miss it. Good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma. And all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center welcoming you to It's Your Date with Destiny, the television arm of our media ministry. And we want to take you right away into uh, one of the sessions we did uh, some time ago under the caption, Storming the Gates. We just want to whet your appetite as it pertains to what is coming up at the end of March. Call our number, 633 3780 you, you didn't hear anybody answer you this time. Call on Monday, 633-3780. And we want you to be in this uh, a powerful session of seeing the might and power of God at work. God bless you as you view. Call up someone and tell them we are storming the gates. The Lord intimated to me that we spend 
some time establishing the truth about sonship before we even deal with the gates, whether gates of hell, gates of heaven, gates of wherever. Because when we come to understand sonship, that we are molded along the same lines as Jesus. Did you read that? Amen. Which means that if we examine carefully the elements that make up Jesus, then God is saying, by his word, and he's expecting us to have it by experience that whatever Jesus went through, and whatever ever he experienced, and whatever he has as his attributes, we are entitled to have that. And not just to have it, but to display it, to execute it, because it, it makes no sense you have it and you're not executing it. it. Why is that important? Because we are coming to a teaching tonight, another aspect of the teaching tonight, that's going to that put us in a, a, a place of uh, greater confidence on a more consistent basis. And as, as a result, I want us to turn, or in pursuit of it, I want us to turn to Romans 8 again. Romans 8. In fact, before you get to Romans 8, you have Romans 7, and that is a revelation. 7 comes before 8. But it's not a, a, a hollow uh, reference. Because one of the things I want us to pay attention to is that, and I preached it when we were dealing with the prodigal son, the first son that went out and came back is that we eliminate the self-condemnation. What did I say? The self-condemnation syndrome. If we don't eliminate that, then God can't even get through to us. Eliminate the public opinion condemnation as well. Eliminate people using your voice to speak their words into your life so that you never have equilibrium. You're never balanced. You're always feeling down because somebody would have spoken into you something that disconfabulates you push you to one side, and by the time you catch yourself, boom, they push you to the next side. It's important because God is not like that. Tell your neighbor, our father is not like that. Oh, yes, oh, yes, he will discipline you, he will straighten you out, but by the time he's finished with you, you're good to go again. Are you hearing me? And I want us to develop that ability, and, and not a, not, it's not just an ability, no, it's an art, because all of us have the ability, we just don't use it. It's an art. Develop the art of speaking to people but not leaving them stripped. Not leaving them naked. Don't relish the fact that you left somebody stripped. Are you hearing me? It's important because if we, not everybody can handle shaking off the stripper off your back. Are you hearing me? And sometimes we are the ones riding our own backs. I will arise and go to the Father and I will say to the Father, say to my Father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I will say, make me a servant for I'm not worthy anymore to be a son. He should have stopped at the point where he said, I have sinned against you and against heaven. 
Because if you're, if you're going to be used of God as a son, in fact, not, not even used of God, if you're going to understand your position as a son, you cannot heap garbage on your back, even if it sounds noble. And it may impress God. Are, are you hearing me? Be, because I want to bring us to this point in Romans 8.1 that says there is therefore no, no condemnation. Hear why? Because if you stand at any gate, whether it's a heaven gate or a hell's gate, and you are operating under condemnation, you're beaten. So I want you to, to look at Romans 7, 15. Now, remember, remember that in the days of Paul and all the others who wrote, they, they, they never knew that what they wrote will end up in the Bible. Are, are you hearing me? All they did, like Paul, being a father to many churches, he would write letters of encouragement also letters of correction, letters of instruction. Now, in the theological setting, it's in the Bible, 13 of his books, and each one of them is um, called an epistle, and inside of it you'll find truths that will govern our lives. But at the time they were writing, they didn't write their letters and chapters. It's those who compiled the Bible in the days of, of uh, King James, when he got a, a, a holy whim, whim, God used him. He had the money at the time and the clout to translate, to get people whom he paid to translate the Bible and so on in the King James language. But that was in the 1600s. That was in the when? And that is why people who are only stuck on the King James, they are missing out on deeper revelation. Because some people believe that's the only holy and inspired version of the Bible. I have a problem with that because it was translated from another um, language. So then that, the one from the original language is not inspired. You see, religion is a terrible spirit. Religion makes you a member of a church, but never a son of God. And I'm going to be talking about that tonight. So let's see how we could, we could get this. Paul, the great apostle, the apostle who taught us how to live right and who wrote such, sometimes such stinging reviews of, his, of the churches that he ran. That even the day when we read them, things he wrote to the Colossians and the, uh, um, and the Corinthians and so on, you and all shudder inside of you when you read what he wrote. And, and, and the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, sanctions that are attached to us violating the, the principles that God has laid down. Yet when you read Romans 7 from verse 15, you'll realize that he himself understood what it was to carry a wrong weights on yourself that could hinder you from enjoying your position as a son of God. So he, he writes this in um, verse 15 of Romans 7. Let's, let's all read that together. We, we in the King James. For that which not, for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do. Is there anybody in here? who never experienced that. Please come and meet me in the office. I want to record it and put it out there. How you manage never to have a dilemma like this. Because if you are breathing oxygen like me, if you eat food like I do and do what it, with it what I do, at the end of it, you're going to run into this. As holy and as righteous as you may be, and I'm glad is Apostle Paul who wrote this. 
another Apostle Emmanuel, Vivian Duncan, who put it inside there. It was there before I, I was born, and it's going to be there long after I die. That the great Apostle Paul found himself in a quandary, in a dilemma. When he wanted to do good, evil was present. And the thing that he didn't want to do is what he found himself doing. Huh? Because I want you to understand that the very people who may attach and may level and may fire broadside condemnations at you, they go through that thing too. And that is why you don't have to carry on your back the condemnation they heaped on you. Because they go through that too. Maybe not the way you're going through it. But they have their own battles. Look at this. Read verse 16 for me. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that, is, that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He said, if the thing, if the thing that, 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 that uh, I am doing, but which I did not want to do, if I do it, he's saying, then for me, it's a good thing. But then he says, if, you have to get it from the sense that if what, what you ended up doing is contrary to what you know should be done, then he says, there's a, another law that's attacking you. And he comes right down uh, and, and, and says this. Verse 19, read verse 19. For the good that I would do not, For the good that I would, I do not. Understand the would there means that I desire to. But the evil which I desire not to do, that I find myself doing. Read verse 20. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I, but sin that dwells in me. He says it twice. He says it twice. He says it twice. But I want you to know the Son of God after whom we have been molded conquered that. Did you hear me? Therefore if he dwells in me he dwells in you then you have the power and the authority to do just that. To conquer it. So, because Paul is not making a case here for fatalism. Well it makes no sense I try because at any rate I go end up doing wrong anyway. Huh? That's not what he's saying. What he's really saying is this, that do not walk around like a peacock because you conquered one temptation. Because the devil going to be coming again. And while you're pruning your feathers, you may get sucked in. Are you in? Good. When you come through one, you need to give God thanks. And say, Lord, prepare me for the next one. Because it's going to come again. As Apostle Gemma just said, the devil has a job to do and he loves it. And what is so funny about him, God is a creator, but the devil is a recruiter. He looks for people whom he can use with the greatest impact to devastate you. So we go on to verse 23. Let's read. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now who is writing this? Who is Apostle Paul? The man that God used to what? lay the foundation and the pillars upon which the church is built. Peter, James, and John, they turned aside with Jesus, and then they 
started the building up in the upper room. But God needed somebody who was really educated and taught, well taught in law and economics and all of that to lay down structure for the church. So he went and found a killer. The man was a mass murderer. Yet God says, you are the man. Later on, Paul is speaking to Timothy and, and the Philippians and others, and he's talking about what he used to do. But he's not condemning himself anymore. He's taking it as a good cough in the devil's mouth. You had me killing Christians, but now I'm teaching them. You had me raiding the church and jailing people, but now I'm structuring the church, and they go lick you up when the... When Destiny the anointing oil. Every time we come on the set, we anoint our hands and we stretch our hands forth and we are speaking a relevant word. Maybe the midnight gate has stood before you and it's blocking you. Somebody into witchcraft, somebody into putting bondages upon others have attack, has attacked you. Well, we have the answer for you. I'm stretching my hands forth. I'm going to stretch your hands forth and just like Samson, I want you to grab hold of that gate of witchcraft, that gate of manipulation, and I want you to pull it, push it, tear it, because the might of God is upon you, the spirit of might and power, the spirit of grace, the spirit of deliverance, the spirit of the Lord is upon you, and he has anointed you to bring deliverance to your situation. So Father, I break the hold, I break the barriers. Lord, with the anointing you have placed on us, we declare your child is set free right now, whatever form it has taken. In Jesus' name, receive it. Amen and amen. And that's just a little tip on what's going to happen on the 24th of March, Holy Thursday night, beginning at 10 p.m., we want this place to be packed out. Every unit of divine destiny, packed out. Yes, in all our branches. We want you to come from 10 p.m. And we're going right through, on, uh, uh, that's on Holy Thursday, right through until 6.30 p.m. on Good Friday. It's divided into four major segments. If you look at the information uh, on the flyer right now on the screen, you'll see we go from 10 on Holy Thursday night to around 3 a.m. on Good Friday. That's storming the midnight gate. We're going through the midnight hour. And like Paul and Silas, oh my word, around that point in time, we're going to break the bands of the enemy by way of praise, by way of worship. And every witchcraft spirit, every witchcraft practitioner who has attacked God's people, uh, between 12 and 3, the witching hour, there's going to be a declaration and a breaking of their might and power, or so they think they have might and power. And then we go from about 4 o'clock until around 7, 4 a.m. until about 7 a.m. on Good Friday morning. Yes, and we are storming the morning gate and we are decreeing every emotional problem that you have. Everyone with an emotional problem, with a depression problem, everyone that's feeling as though nobody cares about you. You've been crying for a long time. We are decreeing to you. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Then from seven, we have breakfast. So if you are coming and you want to have breakfast, then you need to call and register. The breakfast is going to cost you anywhere around 20 to 25 dollars, a good breakfast. Yes, and then we get from 9.30, between 9.30 and 10, we start storming the midday gate. Oh, that one is absolutely powerful. That's the one we think everybody should be coming in because it's it's uh, daylight. It's uh, a, a time when you could bring the whole family. You wanted to bring the whole family. Yes, because we are breaking generation curses. We are dealing with unforgiveness. We are dealing with abandonment. We are dealing with all types of situations, verbal abuse that have brought 
pain to people. And we are going to be looking at the woman at the well. The woman at the well, oh, I tell you, why did she go for water at midday when everybody else, every other woman who went for water went either in the early morning or late evening and they went in groups. Why did she go alone? But we have a bigger question. Why did Jesus meet her at the well? Oh, you need to come because you're going to be liberated. Your family will be liberated. And then from 4 p.m., we go storming the evening gate. The evening gate would, is usually at 6 p.m. Yes, 6 p.m. when the, 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 the landowners and the farmers handed out wages to their workers. We are here to tell you that between 4 and 6 in the afternoon on Good Friday, we will be storming the evening gate. It's the breaking of lack, breaking the back of poverty. We are dealing with financial situations, how to think wealth, how to think wealth. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. Oh, I feel it already. You need to be here. And it's also a time of sowing seed. Yes, we'll be sowing a seed during that time for our building project, which is Project Ezra, over uh, the, the, the road from our main building right now. We have our lot across there for building this major sanctuary, and we want you to be part of it. As you saw, there's going to be a breaking of the back of poverty. So get all excited. Get all excited. I am. I, I hope you are. All the folks at Divine Destiny, we are excited about storming the gates. 20 hours of worship and deliverance. We're looking out for you. And don't forget our weekly programs on the radio this uh, Monday at uh, uh, 9 p.m. or 19.1. It's your date with destiny. Our radio program uh, also on Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. We have Living the More Abundant Life on 107.1. And on Friday at 3 p.m., we have Ask Pastor Gemma, a powerful program, Q&A program as they call it, where we address questions that many are afraid to ask and very few dare to answer. Of course, this weekend we have our services. Uh, I'm telling you, at Divine Destiny, we are caught up in the very presence of God. We want you to come visit with us and receive an inflow of the glory of God. So until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of divine destiny worship center declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Yeah, too. Because it doesn't matter how forgiven you are. It doesn't matter how, uh, 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 how you call it, confident you are in your position in God. It doesn't matter how advanced you are in your uh, uh, walk with God. The devil knows where your rewind button is. Continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.